Today we're going to use Revit Adaptive Components to create a model of one structural column which would be part of Calatrava's railway station roof in Lisbon. And this is what it's going to look like when we finish. So we get into Revit and in an adaptive component family, press three points, select those points and make them adaptive and then the first point we just need that to be exactly on the origin which is very annoying that it won't actually do that it won't snap in 3d the rest it doesn't really matter so we're going to now join those points with reference lines so we have to make sure that 3d snapping is on first and we'll start with point one up to point two Point three, back to one. We then want to create an arc because one of the structural members is curved and we need the, the arc to run between points one and three. And if I were to just create an arc like that and then grab adaptive point three and flex it, we'll see that the arc does not remain planar. So I'm going to have to get rid of that and start again with the arc. Now we need the arc to, to stay on the plane that's defined by that triangle. We could put a plane there and use that as our work plane, but I'm going to use reference lines to do that. But first I need to actually put a point onto the middle of this line and then create no, I don't want to save that. Create a, a, a line from point two to this hosted midpoint. And then I'm going to create another point on this line. And then create my reference line again. Snap to point one, snap to point three, and snap to my new hosted point. And then do some flexing and we can see that the arc is now planar between those three points which is what we're after so now we need to start putting in a bit of structure onto this rig first thing we're going to do is place a couple of points on to the arc hosted points and we're going to use those to host some a profile so what I'm going to do is go to the profile that I have created. Now this is another adaptive component. There's no adaptive point and it's it's basically a like a conventional Revit profile but it's an adaptive one so you can see it in 3D. So we just need to it and it's parametric so we need to load that into the rig that we just created and we can then place that onto one of those points and onto another point and you will see that when you place it on the point it actually changes its orientation to match that of the point and if we grab the point then you can move that along the arc and you'll see that it changes the normalized curve value when you do that. You will also notice that I haven't put the profiles right on the end of the arc because basically need to allow for a bit of a connection at each end but I also like to use these points to host the profiles because they give you some controls that you don't have when in the adaptive environment that you might normally have in a, in a traditional Revit profile hosting and when we select the profile you'll see what I mean there's 
there's no parameters that you can change for rotation, there's just one for flip. But if we change, pick the point, you can see we've got a rotation angle. And in fact, our structure needs to be rotated. So we might just rotate that to 270. And pick this point here and rotate this one to 270 as well. So now we have the structural profile in the right orientation. So I'm going to pick one profile. Pick. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to pick this profile and change it. I'm going to go into the type properties and duplicate this. Make a new one called 500 times 200 and I'm going to change its dimensions match the name so we now have a bigger profile at this end and a small one at this end so if I pick those two profiles and I also pick just the arc now I have to press tab to make sure I put select only that. So I now have three elements selected, the two profiles and the arc. So now I can go up to create form and I should get my structural member there. Now I want that to go a little closer to the end there. So I'm picking the reference point and I'm going to drag it along this arc. Now I could be scientific about this and, and set an exact value here, but for this demo it doesn't really matter. And I might pick this point and drag it along a little bit. Okay, so now we have our curved structural member there, and if I can select this point here, we also have a normalized curve parameter here and I can drag this along the line to change the arc and in fact I might associate that to segment proportion. Now we want to put another structural member along the top this is going to be a lot simpler I'm just going to go to a, another adaptive component that I have already created this very simple two adaptive points with a, a tube form running between so I'll load that into the family and then I will just place one between point two and point three I probably should be a little more careful and set that back from the end like I did with the curved member but uh, doesn't really matter for this. Now at this moment we have a flat piece of structure. We actually need an additional point that's not planar so I'm going to place another point and I'd better just set the work plane to that. Place another point out here. Make this adaptive, move it down so that it's not planar with the others. Going to join reference lines from adaptive point 2 to 4 and back to 3 and then we're going to add a component, a tubular component from adaptive point 2 four and another one from three to four. In fact we don't even really need those reference lines underneath. But anyway, there we have our piece of structural framing and we are going to load that into 
the rig that we created in the previous demo. So here we have our rig and I'm just going to bail out of placing that for the moment. I need to actually add an additional point hosted onto this line because this lower section is just going to be a vertical extrusion of a square and then the structure actually branches out from there. So we need to place our structural component we've just created using a similar method that we did for the roof panels and it's probably going to be easier if I hide, hide them both. So now we can create structure by placing our four point adaptive component. Now we have to do this in the right order and we have to snap to reference points always. So the first one goes to down the bottom there. Second one is a little slow to respond, goes to this point. And then the third one goes to this, the internal circle to one of the divided path points. And then we go to the outer circle and go ar around the circle by one point. Now we need to train Revit as to how we want this to repeat when we create the pattern rotating around. So we have to place a second one. So that goes on the same point. Same point again. You have to make sure that it goes to the reference point there, not to the end of the tube. And then we go out to point on the divided path, out to the outer circle, and round by one point, and snap there. So now we can escape out of that. Pick one, pick two adaptive components, and we go up to the repeat command. So you can see from that that it gets a little tricky. So we now need to replace, to place some more adaptive components, the reverse ones. So what I'm going to do is select this and hide this because it's going to get in the way for sure when we're trying to place the other one. Now we have a problem here because these pipes were nested families and they were not hidden. So I select one of those, select all instances in the project and hide those as well. It's a little annoying. Place component. Start down the bottom. Reference point. To reference point. Now this is where it starts getting tricky because we have to remember where we place the other ones and do in reverse order. Reverse direction, sorry, for the last one. Point of divided path. And we'll place another one. Point. Point. Point of divided path. Point of divided path. And let's hope we've got this one right. First time. Repeat. Looks like we have. And reset. And there we have. our structure. And if we connect up all the parameters from the nested families, 
you will have a fully parametric structure here. So the next step will be to fill in some intermediate struts. But that should do us for today.